Hey folks, Rose so here. I'm in the middle of harvesting yarrow, and halfway through I thought, you know what, I should share this. Um, showed my yarrow patches in the garden during my garden shares. Here's what I've cut. There's a whole tray full. Here's what I've trimmed off the flower tops. And these are the stalks that are left, which I still want to go back through because there's leaves on there, and I have harvest the leaves as well. So I was going to try to give you a quick uh, kind of tutorial on how I get from this big stack of cuttings to this nice little pile of flowers. It's not really that hard. So I uh, get set up for that. So basically all there is to it is taking one of your stalks. Um, let's see, upside down might be better to see. You can see how the flower is all bunched up. And the easiest thing to do, just try another angle, is to try to get underneath here, bunching up the flower tops and trimming them. Oh, no, this is a farther away angle, hope you can still see. And you find bugs along the way. I had to get rid of a tick I found a little earlier that was crawling around here. You can zoom in a little bit. It's starting to rain and I'm working outside so I can't make this very long. Just gotta get the camera back in. And then I'll try to aim this towards the camera, but I'm just bunching up the flowers and cutting off the tops. Because that's what I want. It'll dry faster this way too. They can be just hung to dry and then trimmed up later. Obviously another way to do it. But I like doing it this way. I find they dry a lot faster this way rather than hanging them. So here comes the rain. I'm gonna have to cut this cut this short. Ha ha ha. <laughs> okay before I go further I was gonna give you a little bit of anatomy of a yarrow top. This is some of what I cut before. And then it's a top that kind of looks like it's, you know, like one flower top, but it's not. If you look close, I'll separate one out, you can see that all little tiny flowers at the tips of little tiny stems. So when I cut these, I gotta focus, I try to spread them and then take my scissors right, right close to my fingers and then cut the tops off that way. I wasn't sure how clear the other video part came out. So you have to do this with each little section generally. It depends how flat the top of the yarrow is when it's growing. Sometimes uh, they'll grow a bit crooked. Where is it? There it is. I held this up straight. You can see it's grown kind of crooked. So sometimes it makes it a little more difficult to trim them. But generally, it's uh, pretty easy to just open them like that with your fingers, just squish them and cut. So that's uh, the anatomy of that. The leaves, I'll just pull off. You know, the leaves have uh, different properties. I do store them in a separate container than the uh, tops. And I'll go over some of the properties of yarrow in a bit. And I did want to show you some yarrow that's already been harvested. This was last year's harvest. Well, this is my jar from last year. It's the uh, white. Actually, it says 2011. So this is a couple of years old, but it's still good, still viable. I still use it. This is it dried. When it dries, even though this was the white yarrow, which is what you see here, the white yarrow. It does turn a little yellow and it shrinks up a bit. And what I'm going to do to, to dry this current batch, move this out of the way, the dried, 
is I have parchment paper, lots of parchment paper, and lots of trays. So I'll spread out this big pile onto several trays until it's relatively thin. And try to keep it in a, as dry a place as possible. Our humidity has been really high, so as long as I'm running the air conditioner, it'll take some of the moisture out of the air and help to dry these quicker. It'll probably take a few days, but I do have to, once they're on the trays and give them 24 hours, I'll go and I'll stir them up a bit just to kind of get all the different areas to dry. And you'll know when they're dry because they come out pretty crispy and they're much smaller. They're not like real crunchy crispy, but I know these are dry from a couple years ago. So, and I will get back to you with some of the properties of yarrow. So here's my yarrow now spread out on two trays in a pretty fine layer. And I'll keep turning them every few days until it's dry. And there's the leaves, which I pulled off all those stems. Should probably spread them in another thinner layer, but the leaves are pretty airy, so circulation, air circulation can get through them pretty well. Okay, I'm going to give you a quick rundown on Yarrow from the Complete Medicinal Herbal by Penelope Odie. It's an older book, but it's valid. Um, here's the page on Yarrow. You should be able to recognize that from the Yarrow I showed you. Nice pictures in this book. Um, there's various uses for the flowers versus the leaves versus uh, this is just showing the dried aerial parts but the flowers have anti-allergenic compounds they're used for various allergic music mucus problems including hay fever the essential oil if you can get it it's very expensive usually to get it's a dark blue oil and um, it's generally used as an anti-inflammatory or in chest rubs for colds and uh, flus. If you ever get essential oil though, you need to dilute it with a uh, carrier oil, like almond oil for example. Never use essential oil directly on the skin. And then here are the leaves, and the leaves encourage clotting, so they can be used for fresh nosebleeds, like if you see yarrow in growing in the wild, you can use it for a uh, nosebleed. But it can also start a nosebleed, as I said. So it really depends. You know, everybody that uses uh, medicinal herbals needs to study the herb itself and find out if there are any interactions between medications they might be taking or conditions that they have. That's my disclaimer. That's a quick rundown on Nero. Um, it could give you a little bit more detail, but. I generally use it as an anti-inflammatory. I don't use the oil necessarily, but the aerial parts still contain the same constituents, the same volatile oils in them, which will generally come out in a tea. And that's how I use Zero in a tea. Thanks for watching.